Now the next part of examination is the respiratory function test. That is also important in the examination of the ear. So some other patient will they while they come to you will come with complaints of dizziness or what you which is most commonly examined okay during the examination of the of the balance system of the ear. As already told, it has two functions. One is hearing and next is the balance. Now we'll discuss about balance. When the patient enters your examination hall, you should be able to identify the patient's gait. When there is some problem with the gait, then you are sure that the patient is having some form of dizziness or some form of balance disorder. So there are different techniques of examination of balance disorder in the, in the, in the patient. So in the, this is basically a clinical exam. So this is not a lab test. So we'll be discussing about the clinical examination of balance only. So first thing, please take all your respects. So first thing to see for the balance is a spontaneous nystagmus in the patient's eye. Spontaneous nystagmus. For that, you will look at the patient's eye. You have to ask the patient to uh, look towards straight towards you and simply if look in the eyes to find out the uh, if there is nystagmus or not. That is spontaneous nystagmus. Spontaneous. Now, suppose simply ask the patient to keep to see in your eyes as you know uh, the fingertip that's around 30 centimeters away from the patient okay 30 cm away from the patient so the dictum is 30 cm and 30 degrees not more than 30 degrees if you go more than 30 to 45 degrees then we feel this called nystagmus okay because it's difficult for us to for you to see so 30 centimeters and 30 degrees laterally so just shift the patient like this ask the person to look on your fingertips and just move it towards left and right at not more than 30 degrees, 30 to 45 degrees. So if there is nystagmus, you have to look for the nystagmus. Nystagmus is, what is nystagmus? That is rhythmic involuntary movement of the eyes. Okay, when the person is here, so there will be, if there is nystagmus, that should be rhythmic and involuntary movement. So in this in this case, there is no nystagmus, so is uh, there is no nystagmus on him. And go to left, go to right, go up, go down in different motions. Okay. So suppose when the person is having vertical nystagmus or horizontal nystagmus, you have to just note the nystagmus. In the ear, the most common nystagmus is the horizontal nystagmus, not the vertical nystagmus. So if, if the patient is having vertical nystagmus, you have to think of central cause. So this is all regarding the simple nystagmus. Suppose if the patient is having nystagmus, then you have to look for the either patient is having on the right side or towards the left side, that is right or left, okay? The certain side. Then nystagmus, you have to look for the duration of nystagmus. Usually in case of peripheral nystagmus, that is in E in uh, nystagmus due to ear, that is short time. So usually it happens after 10 seconds to one minute, not very long after one minute, okay? And that nystagmus will have some lag. Suppose if you keep the eyes, keep the finger here, that will, that will the nystagmus will happen after five to ten seconds lagging. Central nystagmus does not have lagging. So as you keep there, just keep on moving. Okay? Now just we'll yeah, ask the patient to remove the shoes and okay. okay. Just ask the patient to remove the straight line. Uh, then ask the patient to close his eyes, his or her eyes, to close, okay, to close. Then just we can support when the patient is having some form of uh, disturbance, dizziness. Okay, ask the patient to close and keep in a in a standing position. So when he falls towards right or left side, then you have to know either he is moving like division is towards right or left side. Okay. So that is simply uh, for the patient. This is a Rumbog test. Rumbog test it can be either done by the patient's the arms stretched or the stretched arms. <laughs> and ask the patient to simply close the close the eyes. This is a question. Or simple by straight. It can be by between different ways. Suppose when the patient is not having any vertigo or any form of disease, then you can do sarbon rumbog test that is called as sarbon rumbog test. Ask the patient to simply like this, okay? Like this, yeah, like this. And ask the patient to close the eyes. So, he is normal, so there is nothing. So, when the patient is having 
because there is no balance now. There is no com compensation, no balance. So that I mean, suppose when the person doing like this, doing like this, there will be some form of compensation. Okay. Okay. Then now the next test is Unterberger test. Unterberger test. In this test, the person is asked to close the eyes, and the person is stepping in the so-called Fukuda stepping test. The person has to step, has to do stepping in the in a closed uh, area of around one meters, maybe one meter, so then just ask the person to step in. The person has to be stabilized for 90 steps in one minute, so around one and one point five steps in a second. Okay? So just I'll show you the technique. So so we don't so we like this and just one, two, three, four fast. Okay, then so we for 90, 90 steps. It's not to count the steps, and for that we'll count the patient whenever rotation is there, whatever rotation is there, and whatever patient forward and backward movement is there. So there is power movement of more than 50 centimeters, that is, more than 50 cm or backward more than 50 cm, or when there is angulation of more than 12 degrees, maximum by 30 degrees, you have to think of uh, having any peripheral vision. Suppose when the patient is having to right side, then okay, he might go towards the right, then when left, then go towards the left side. So that is called Fukuraji stepping test or underwater test. That is commonly performed as the balance test. So important balance test for you are one is nystagmus, one is from mouth test, and this is underwater test. If you know this much, that will be all right for your level. Okay, now we move on to the examination of station tube. For that, you should uh, station tube function test when the patient's embedding memory is normal or when there is no population of astronauts. Here we have the Siegel's pneumatic spe speculum or pneumatic autoscope. Uh, okay, some pneumatic body is attached here and we have to look for the for the, the movement of embedding membrane. So I'll test on the left side now. Okay. This is the autoscope, then I'll keep the autoscope like this and I'll just keep a bag here, pneumatic bag, and just I'll push the air. So when the patient is having uh, some form of like mobility of the bank membrane, that is normal. So when the fistula test can be performed at the same time, fistula test, but when, the, when you keep the positive pressure, then there should be some form of vertigo that is called fistula test. Okay, that is usually done at last. And at the same time, we can do the mobility of nipine membrane. So three important things test can be performed at the same time. That is, when you are looking for the nipine membrane, we are using the pneumatic autoscope. You can one, you can see the movement of nipine membrane mobility. Next, we can test for the station tube, and next, you can even test for the fistula test. Three important things. The fistula test is usually done at last because when the patient is having vertigo, when the patient is having somehow dizziness, then it will be difficult for you to proceed further. Okay, so station to function test when the patient is uh, like having normal tibetan membrane, then again, I think that can be performed by Barcelona maneuver, that is closing the nostrils and mouth and breathing out. Okay, just to close the nostrils and close the mouth and breathe out. Okay, so just that is Barcelona maneuver, and you should see the tibetan mobility in Barcelona. Okay, so when the patient is doing Barcelona maneuver, then TM should move slightly. Laterally, this will be lateral bulging of the embedding membrane. Okay, that usually happens on the intelligence of the patient. Some patients can do, some patients cannot do. Now, when there is perforation of the embedding membrane, sometimes you can see the interior portion of the uh, the embedding membrane, interior portion of the past inside with the interior quadrant, and the tympanic, the you can see the opening of the station tube sometimes, but it will be difficult sometimes. Then. If you are doing examination of the posterior endoscopy, then uh, you can see the opening of the station tube. You can do, do through the endoscope also. So these are all things, they, this, they help us to identify the station tube function. That is important for, especially my new plastic and plastic surgery. When the station tube is not patent, then the surgery of the success, success of the surgery will be less. Okay. Now at last, we'll come to examination of facial now. The facial examination, well, we cannot examine the, the temporal portion, but we can just examine the peripheral branches only. So peripheral branches, there are high peripheral branches, you know. So first, when the patient is asked to 
crown guy is frowning up. Okay, you see here. Yeah. So this is the frowning. And you have to see the you have to compare right with the left side. Okay. You have to compare two sides. And the person has equal frowning, then we suppose that this side is the facial function of the uh, this part is normal, upper part is normal. Then the person is asked to close the eyes. Okay, close the eyes and you should try to open the eyes so it is normal on both the sides. So it is suppose that the person is having normal facial movement. Then again, the person is asked to clean the teeth. Yeah, to show the teeth. So your teeth to me, very good. Okay, but you have to see for the nasal evil fall, which is normal in him. Okay, then just visual, okay, blowing the oh, blowing, okay, the results are seen. Now it has to be blown, blown. And just at last, the person has to slightly uh, close the close the mouth and do like this, about the lower lips, about some of the lower lips. You can strike the shoulders again, like some way, adapt like this. So all these functions, suppose when the functions are uh, okay, deranged at one side, either right or left side, then we think that there is lower motor facial paralysis or paralysis. In him, the facial paralysis is normal. So, there is all regarding the examination of facial now at the peripheral segments. As a later on, we cannot do all the things. But with the patients in the exam, if you are having patients in the exam as facial now paralysis, then you have to do other proper diagnosis tests which are under the scope of the examination. Thank you so much.